Hey, Arbor community. It's Mark here from Visit Fibers. Hey, um, I wanted to uh, make a video about gratitude. Um, I've been so blessed this year to uh, travel all over the country and meet tons of great arborists and be a part of a whole bunch of cool workshops. Um, and I wanted to say thank you and uh, just tell some people about what's going on with Fids and Fibers. Um, back in April, April 9th, I believe, I left my place here in New Hampshire and started a U.S. tour going all around. And uh, a couple places, actually, I just wanted to list off the places that I went so people could see how many miles we put on the old yellow suburban. Um, went down to Shelter Tree in Attleboro and saw Tim Walsh and Eric uh, Plasekios um, talk about the ANSI Z. It was an awesome meeting. Um, Tim's doing a really great job with his statistics and his delivery and getting the word out about the Z. Uh, that was the super thing to get to. Um, and then I headed out to Endors in Canton, Ohio and did a splicing workshop there. At the, it's a wonderful facility and an old barn that they've converted into their uh, arborist supply shop. And then down to Crestone, Colorado, where I was able to take part in a U.S. Forest Service meeting about fire mitigation, which was something totally new to me. Uh, being up here where there's lots of water, it never really occurred to me how crown fires can spread under certain wind conditions and how to space the trees and um, you know different things you can do to reduce the fuel load at the ground and man I was super impressed with the U.S. Forest Service work out there um, and then I headed to the Petzl Symposium with Melissa Levangi and Martin Penrose and uh, I met some amazing people James Luce uh, Juni, uh, Tyler Zuninga, um, and just had a fantastic time uh, being around um, cream of the crop of, of not just arborists, but of other folks that are using Petzl products and being at the Petzl facility. Petzl did a bang up job with that uh, symposium. Um, I walked away from that with a lot of really neat ideas. So i um, super grateful for that. Then I headed up to BC, Canada uh, at Martin's place uh, up in Vancouver. Um, we did a workshop at New Green's facility. So Martin's got a really great gig going up there. He's splicing, he's doing arborist sales, he's doing tree work, he's got a stump grinder going, and he's got a brake test machine up there. And his mind is just ticking over a thousand miles an hour, and it's so good to be about around his energy and uh, to collaborate with him and do cool stuff. And um, I'm so grateful to spend time with him and his family and Will and Pat uh, and their awesome dog, Hank, um, and Rob, their, uh, their mechanic in the shop. What a super time I had, um, so welcoming. Um, then I headed down to uh, uh, Samson Rope to see their facility, run their brake test machines, talk to their engineers, meet with their marketing people, and they pledged full support to FIDS and Fibers going forward. They've always supported us in the past, for the past 10 years, but they have renewed their pledge to uh, support us uh, with fiber, with information, with access to their engineers, and um, they're looking at uh, taking care of our travel costs and continuing to bring you know, top flight information to our program so we can push it back out. So I can't say enough about Samson Rope. Um, then I headed down to uh, meet up with Ryan Caprickey in Hood River, which was just filled my heart with joy. Uh, we had such a wonderful time. And he introduced me to a bunch of cool people in the Portland area, Anita Dillis, um, and I saw Junie again, and then uh, Miko, and um, um, gosh, I forgot her name, she's so wonderful, the uh, Sweaty Betty, 
Tree Care Girl. I love you. I'm sorry I forgot your name right this minute, but I'm trying to remember so many things. Um, I get to hang out with those folks and be at the Portland Tree Comp, the Tree Climbing Comp, where I ran into um, Javier, Quiros, and um, a whole bunch of other great people. We made the impact on a, a young guy that came to the comp, and we all donated gear to him to help get him off the ground. And um, we talked to his parents, and we we just had a, a really touching time there. Um, I have such fond memories of being in Portland. Um, and uh, I met with a woman who uh, helps publish books. And she offered to help me do uh, work on the Growth Ring book, Alicia Ibala. Uh, she's part of the Aloha Arbor Association. It's just been contact after contact after contact. She and I shared a wonderful lunch together, a brainstorming session, and I'm looking forward to working with her in the future as well. Um, and then I got really lucky and I got to go down to Eugene, Oregon and meet with uh, um, Jimmy Swingle and Eric Forsman at the U.S. Forest Service at the Dorina Research Facility where they were doing a 60-person tree climbing workshop that they do annually. And uh, they gave me the opportunity to uh, speak to the group about splicing, do some demonstration, talk about rope. And then the next morning, they had me come in and I did a discussion about gear inspection and life support and integrity and um, clear thinking about your gear. Um, and it was super well received. Uh, and they asked me to come back annually to do that. I hope that that comes to fruition because that facility is awesome and the people I met were amazing. Um, also, while I was in Vancouver, not to forget, um, uh, Tiger Divine and Kyle, Kyle, <laughs> uh, and Kaylee were doing uh, a workshop, and I got the opportunity to go and do another splicing demonstration for Arb Can, and um, that was super rewarding. Um, people were very interested. It was very energizing, and I am so appreciative of that these people who were teaching other workshops would invite me in and allow me access to their students to talk about what I'm passionate about and, and, and spread the word of safety and understanding of rope and understanding of, of how fiber works and, and splices. Um, I even got a, a personal message from Duane thanking me for, for being a part of that. Um, so uh, let me think where else I went. Um, so then I headed back from the Pacific Northwest into Denver uh, to meet up with Keith Stoner and a guy named Bryce at this place called Tradecraft in Denver. What an amazing facility. And then he hosted us, Bryce hosted us for a two-day workshop there where we were able to donate $1,000 to a family of a fallen tree worker, uh, this guy, um, Joseph Garcia who uh, tragically took his own life. I don't know the details of it exactly, but his family came and thanked us profusely for um, being the our family that we are to accept Joseph into our community because it helped Joseph um, find his identity and experience love and laughter and kindness and learning and uh, they couldn't be more appreciative of us as a group, as a trade, as an industry, as a tribe. And um, I've been, I was able to meet with Joseph's adopted mom when I went to Wisconsin later. And um, the money that we donated uh, is going to be used with the Rocky Mountain chapter to sponsor a young up-and-coming climber uh, to, to come to Fids and Fibers every year. And so it's feeding back. It's a self, it's a self-perpetuating system. We donate money. The money's coming back, but we're still honoring the memory of Joseph, and uh, their family is feeling more um, healing and inclusive because of it. Um, I lack the words to really express fully how amazing this situation is, 
and my experiences, but I just want to say how grateful I am to their family, to Joseph's family, and to Joseph for lighting up my life with his smile. Um, so then, uh, after I left Denver, I scooted right up to Omaha and did a workshop with Tom Anderson with um, the Omaha um, city and some of the climbers in the area. I was so gratified that the city sent four or five representatives, uh, even from the upper levels of management. Um, they, they had recently had a, a mishap with rope and they were looking for answers and some training opportunities to try to make sure that they keep their people safe. And um, I was super impressed that the upper management would come and spend hours with us talking about rope, talking about rigging, talking about safety factors, talking about negative rigging versus tip ties, and, uh, and really walking away with an appreciation for uh, how training could really enhance their, their program. So that was super cool. Then I headed up to Minneapolis and uh, got a chance to interview Tom Dunlap, one of the founders of Tree Buzz, along with Mark Chisholm. But Tom and I went to a park and we got to talk about um, social media and tree work. And uh, you might find that video on the YouTube channel. Uh, Tom's just a wonderful guy with a great big heart. And uh, it was wonderful to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with him and share a few meals. Um, I also got to see Nicholas Greedy. Uh, I got to spend time with Rebecca Siebel and um, just see the Minneapolis park system, which is really amazing. Uh, the city's really uh, forward thinking and set aside a lot of green space over the years. And uh, Tom has had the opportunity to work in it for a long time. And Nicholas Greedy has also worked in it and might still be working in it. And um, it's just a beautiful resource. So I learned a lot while I was there. Um, and then I got to go to um, De Pere, Wisconsin, or Green Bay area, and work with Casey Selner and Brandon Selner, who are starting a new company called Our Obsession, where they're going to be selling tree gear. But Casey's family has been in tree work, uh, running a fantastic company for decades. His dad started uh, selling their tree and um, getting a tour of their facility, meeting their employees, seeing the high caliber preparation and maintenance of their equipment and their investment back in ARB uh, was really amazing to see someone working so hard and make a top flight company. Um, I'm looking forward to working with them some more. Um, after I left there, I went back to Holman, Wisconsin and did a, a two day workshop at Johnson Ops. Uh, in Holman and uh, I did that with Rebecca and uh, I met some more great great hearted people who are really seriously interested in splicing um, and then I kind of headed home I don't know how many stops that is it's like 12 or 14 places the experiences haven't fully soaked in yet and I have to sit and meditate about it because it's uh, it's so overwhelming and I'm my heart is full my brain is full my experiences are overflowing and um, I returned home back to New Hampshire here and you know my grass was five feet tall and uh, the house was you know shut up and closed and needed to be lived in and and uh, unpacking all the stuff from the truck. You know, I lived in the truck for four months and slept in the truck. Uh, I never slept under a roof. I slept in the truck for four months solid and uh, I couldn't have been happier. Life was simple. Uh, the people were great. I had a few belongings, a little bit of clothes, my splicing stuff and, and the fiber that Yale Portage and Samson Rope provided us for the workshops. I had some hardware I was traveling around with, but basically a cooler, some fruit and vegetables, and, and uh, new scenic vistas every day. Um, I can't recommend enough to get out on the road, meet your fellow arborists, learn new things in new parts of the country. The trees are different. The vegetation is different. People's approach to climbing is different. 
people's approach to business is different. And I feel like I'm a much more well-rounded person after taking this four months and, and traveling around and sharing what I have and then absorbing what other people have to, to share with me. Um, so on the, on the uh, topic of gratitude, I got home a little bit before my birthday and I spent a whole day answering Facebook messages and phone calls and emails and texts. People wish me happy birthday from all over the world and I just want to say thank you so much for keeping me in your thoughts. I know it's easy with Facebook reminding everyone, but it still takes effort to reach out. And for everybody who reached out and all the people that couldn't, um, I just want to say thank you for being my friend and I look forward to seeing you guys, guys on the road or here at Fids and Fibers sometime in the future. So um, I know it's kind of a long video and I ramble a little bit, but uh, something inside me makes me wanna to say thanks. So thank you.